You're listening to the Stable Management Podcast, where we discuss the barn management topics that you're passionate about. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Stable Management Podcast. Our goal is to bring you a real world look into the parts of horse farm management that you love or hate most, such as stall bedding, farm equipment, and pasture maintenance. During each bi-monthly episode, we'll be joined by an expert guest who shares their experiences with and perspectives on an important stable management topic. This episode is brought to you by MaxiGlow Stabilize Rice Bran. The rice bran horse owners prefer is a superior performance supplement specifically formulated for horses. MaxiGlow is available in both pelleted and meal forms and is high in fat and protein, packed with antioxidants, controlled starch, and is very palatable. Right now, Manapro is running a promotion for $5 off MaxiGlow, and the coupon is valid until December 31st, 2024. Please visit M-A-N-N-A-P-R-O dot com slash promotions slash M-A-X hyphen E hyphen G-L-O to take advantage of this offer. My guest today is Bella Nye, Stable Manager at Lord Fairfax Equestrian Center in White Post, Virginia, and she will be sharing her tips on how to make your horse's coat shine. Thank you, Bella, for joining me today. Yeah, hey, Haley. <laughs> Bella, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with horse farm management? Yeah, so I uh, graduated from Centenary University in 2022 with a Bachelor's of Science in Equine Science. From there, I went right into managing a stable, a large dressage stable that traveled from New Jersey to Wellington. Um, And I oversaw more horse care there than like stable property management uh, when I say stable manager. Did a lot of showing. I traveled with the uh, show horses. From there, I moved to the Lord Fairfax Equestrian Center, which is more of a boarding facility. So it's less traveling to shows for me and more day-to-day operations, managing boarded horses um, and keeping the property running smoothly. Awesome. So when you're grooming a horse, can you just tell us your typical routine um, and how might that differ when you're at home versus at a horse show? Yeah. So at home, I really believe in doing all of your homework kind of every day. So at the horse show that you don't have to work as hard. So at home, I take a curry to my horses that are going to be showing Three times a day, I do a quick curry, kind of just all over the body, knock the dirt and dust loose before they get ridden. And then I just wipe that off with a nice soft brush. Uh, after they get ridden, when they're in the wash stall, I wet them down. I curry them all over legs, face, body, hose that off again. That gets all of the sweat any extra dirt or sand that gets stuck to them when they're outside and paddock rolling, things like that. And then put them away once they're dry and completely done. And this is usually a few hours later at the end of the day before dinner, I take them out and I usually take a metal curry comb to them. And that's when I do a very thorough, like tail to ears under the belly, everything curry. And I follow that up with um, a rubber curry comb on the legs or kind of, you know, over the top of the back between their eyes on their face, things like that. Uh, I find that if I do that every day for a while, they are really shiny. They're really dapply. They don't have a lot of skin issues. So when I get to the horse show, I can give them a bath and just kind of keep them touched up. And I don't have to work as hard at getting that kind of like shine. I don't have to use as many products. That's great. I like the idea of the wet curry step. I've never tried that before, but I think I might add it to my routine, especially for the summer. Yeah, I love it. Um, You can see, I mean, you can always see the sweat coming off when you hose them, but when you add that curry in between, you can really see all that sweat that kind of contributes to like the rain rotty or the kind of the gunky fungus that they get. Um, That all comes off. Yeah, my horse tends to get those like little funky spots, especially where he gets the sweatiest. So that's going to be something I add to my routine <laughs> for the summer for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are some things that you notice that might make a horse's coat dull? That could be like diet, um, something that people often miss when they're grooming, something that they do or don't do um, for the horse's turnout, like putting a sheet on them or not, etc. 
definitely diet plays a big role. You want to feed something very complete. Um, and I find just the more complete but simple your diet is, typically better the coat. The more people, the more courses that I see where people add a lot of like the fat supplements and the coat supplements and this and that, I find that it doesn't make a big difference for them. Um, but a very nutritionally complete diet combined with good turnout and good forage so that they're eating grass, even if it's just for a couple hours a day, they're eating good hay and they're being able to go outside and roll um, and scratch their itches and kind of curry themselves a little bit out there uh, plays a big role in the horses being shiny and things that get missed that kind of tend to let the horses be dull in the winter, especially not taking off their blankets um, for any attention other than swapping the blankets. Like if they, you know, if you're not riding your horse that day, still take off the blanket and curry them because everything just kind of gets trapped and sits and not allowing your horses that proper turnout diet capability. Yeah, for sure. So I know with a lot of horses and mine too, during the winter when we put on blankets or during the summer, if you put a fly sheet on your horse, we get those stubborn blanket rubs. Typically, like on the shoulder area, my horse has a weird one by his tail this winter. Do you have any tips for trying to prevent those? The best thing is definitely a really, really consistent currying schedule. Um, the more you curry, the more they have their natural oils come up, and that's going to help prevent blanket rubs, girth rubs, all those kinds of things. If I have a horse that I know is really prone to it, to it or if like, it's a client or a border horse and I know their blanket isn't the perfect fit for like what I would want, but I can't change that specifically. Um, it's a little bit unorthodox, but a little bit of show sheen where they get those rubs before you put the blanket on helps it glide over the hair. Yeah, I'll admit I've done that in a pinch where like <laughs> maybe I know I need to buy a new blanket, but I just haven't made it out to the store yet. I'll try that. Or if I'm like washing a shoulder guard or something like that. That's like my, my backup option. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely good in a pinch and you know, there's, it's not always a perfect scenario and it's better that the horse is warm and you can just throw something kind of over their shoulders or by their tail to um, help that blanket glide. This episode is brought to you by Maxi Glow Stabilize Rice Bran. The Rice Bran horse owners prefer is a superior performance supplement specifically formulated for horses. Maxi Glow is available in both pelleted and meal forms and is high in fat and protein, packed with antioxidants, controlled starch, and is very palatable. Right now, Manapro is running a promotion for $5 off Maxi Glow, and the coupon is valid until December 31st, 2024. Please visit M-A-N-N-A-P-R-O dot com slash promotions slash M-A-X hyphen E hyphen G-L-O to take advantage of this offer. So speaking of tails, do you have any tips for helping horses go sh grow stronger, thicker manes and tails? My horse especially has a thin tail because he used to be a dressage horse so the top was shaved and that kind of took away some of the volume and I'm trying to grow it back so I need all the tips I can get I found so I spent a long time with show horses traveling like kind of chasing the sun so I was either in New Jersey in the summer or in Wellington in the winter so it was never too cold to wash tails um so it's a little bit different in the winter down uh up here but I did like to, especially when I had horses showing in Wellington, I would kind of wash their tails pretty much as often as I would wash my hair. So like almost, you know, every other, almost every day, even if it was just rinsing the tail out, trying to just keep it as clean as possible um, so that it doesn't get that opportunity to get those like kind of like dirty rolls or like tangles. Um on top of that, when the tail is wet, which I would make it wet pretty much every day, whether or not I added soap or conditioner to it, I would um, take my detangling spray and spray it in the tail while it's wet. I thought that really helped it work better. The tail was much less knotty 
just throughout the rest of the, you know, next 24, 48 hours before it was washed again. Um, because to get a thicker tail, what you're looking for is um, to not rip it out, essentially, when you're brushing it. So um, if you're working with something that's thinner or if you're trying to maintain a thick tail. So um, the spraying in the detangler while it's wet really just helped make it so a couple hours later when I would brush it, it would pretty much be detangled completely. Um, another a little bit unorthodox thing, I always brush my tails every day. I was very, very careful, very slow. I would do them in sections, comb through them very nicely. If they were really, if they got really dirty in their stall, I wouldn't brush them. But um, that just kept it so that when I had to brush it or had to wash it, I wasn't just like pulling hair out all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll notice even sometimes with my horse or with others, like when they, especially when they get muddy and they get those like muddy mats in their tail, they'll sometimes like catch on things and then they rip it out themselves. And I always mm -hmm. regret not washing it out before that happened. Yeah, and that was a big thing with us. Like we truck horses a lot. We are putting them in new stalls. They're, you know, looking around, they're going into brand new shavings and they're rolling and they're big horses and, you know, the horse show stalls sometimes. So keeping the tails just always clean and conditioned and detangled meant that if they like flick their tail through the water bucket, it just went through the water bucket or, you know, they're flicking it around the trailer. It's just going to kind of glide over all of those things that they could rip hairs out on. Yeah, that's a really good point. I don't often think about that. And for the mane, do you have any tips on getting it? I know that sometimes when you want to braid your horse, we think, okay, we don't want it to be too terribly thick. But do you have any tips for getting a really thin mane to be a little bit thicker and maybe lay nicer on the neck? Unfortunately, with manes, I do find that sometimes they are genetic. Um, that being said, I did, when I did dressage braids, I wanted a really thick mane because we wanted those nice, pretty, like, balls on the horse's neck I very similarly I kept those manes really really clean and I was always very very intentional to get up on a stool and when I cleaned the manes to clean in at the root and I wanted the skin like the crest of their neck to be very clean and that it was rinsed out entirely every time if I had a horse that was that had lost hair, say they were coming over from Europe in the winter and they had big blanket rubs and they were missing chunks of mane and things like that, I um, had no problem putting like a vitamin E oil. Um, you know, there's different like hair growth kind of oil concoctions you can make on that spot, combing it through the mane or a horse that's with a thin mane in general, putting it on the root, combing it through the mane. Of course, you don't want that when your horse is showing the next day because that's going to be very difficult to braid but if you do it you know for a couple of weeks and the horse isn't showing until next month it's not going to affect your ability to braid the mane next month you just have to wash it out that's a good point one of my minis lost a bunch of her mane to a friend that was chewing it off <laughs> <laughs> at her last barn and i've been desperately trying to grow it back she used to have this like long luscious mane and mm -hmm. it's slow going but we're getting there <laughs> i do i find a lot of us who grew up showing um especially if we grew up with hunter trainers and things like that are very very hesitant to put any product in the mane because it's been like pounded into us that that then you can't braid the mane it's going to be too slick but like that's like you know right before you braid or the day before you can always be putting something in it because it's the same concept as the tail you don't want it tangled and ripping out yeah that's a really good point i think that i definitely still shy away from putting things in the mane since i have that hunter background <laughs> What would be one underrated trick or more that you have for making a horse's coat shine? Something that maybe people might not think is that important. I think, of course, besides like my three day, my three times a day curry is so important to me for a show horse. Um, but I don't think anyone necessarily underestimates the um, importance of currying. Maybe they just don't commit to it as much. Um but if you are committing to brushing your horse that often, your brushes have to be very clean often, especially if you have multiple horses. Um, 
when I start in new stables or I visit stables, that's one of the things that I find most often um, in correlation between kind of dull or especially fungusy horses is that the brushes aren't on a regular cleaning schedule, even if they're just getting rinsed and dusted off at the end of the day. And then they're really thoroughly cleaned once or twice a week. That has made such a big difference in my horse's coats. That's a good point, especially during the winter. That's something I put off. So I'm going to have to start doing that again. (laughs) Do you find that it's beneficial to have separate brushes for each horse to stop the spread of different funguses and infections? Or if you wash them regularly, do you think it's okay to have shared brushes? I think it definitely is dependent on your stable situation. Um, Right now, the stable I manage has... I would say almost 80 horses on the property. So I definitely like to break the brushes up by at least like field mates <laughs> to kind of just separate things a little bit. Back when I was managing a smaller show barn with, you know, 15 horses, we shared brushes amongst grooms and grooms were assigned horses. So like I had my set of brushes. So they really only touched my four or five horses. And I found that that was okay, especially because I cleaned them often. If someone had anything, though, that was strange, um, even if it wasn't like a confirmed fungus or something like that, if I thought their skin was oddly flaky, um, or if, you know, they were just acting a little off um, health-wise, something like that, they immediately got their own set of brushes until they were proven, you know, otherwise needing them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. I think that a lot of times in in some barns, you have people just like not even thinking anything of sharing brushes until something bad happens and then you start thinking about it. Mm-hmm. So what's... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was just like, like absolutely. I've had, um, you know, growing up and things like that, like, oh, all of my horses have that can of bone scurf but I curry it every day, but you're just, you know, passing it along. Yeah. <laughs> <All of those. laughs> Without realizing it. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. So what's one common misconception that you hear people talking about with equine skin and coat health? I think people, um, especially recently have really shied away from bathing horses at all sometimes <laughs> I've run into a lot of grooms recently who have kind of been on the train of like, well, I only bathe when my horse goes to a horse show, which is once a month or every other month. I only bathe, you know, for a really big event. So it's really, it's once a month, every other month. I am not afraid of bathing my horses. I definitely don't want to over bathe. Like there's no one getting soap on them every day. Absolutely not. Even every other day is way pushing it. But I had horses on a strict schedule of getting soap on them every, we did every Tuesday, no matter what, everyone in the stable got a soap bath every Tuesday. And that honestly, again, I think it helped their coats because it was taking off whatever was accumulating there that might've led to a fungus, especially like if Monday was their day off, um, any dirt or dust or sand, things like that. Um, I think sometimes people with the new research coming out about coat health and natural oils and the effects of shampooing are shying away from bathing at all. And I don't think that's necessarily necessary. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I remember when I was managing a farm as well, we had less horses than you have now. We had only 15 horses, but the grooms kind of did that. They wouldn't even bathe every day at a show unless we had like a really dirty gray or something. And I always wondered if there was a method to their madness or (laughs) if it was maybe not as necessary. So that's interesting. Yeah. I'm definitely very careful. Like the shampoos that I use, if I'm going to be bathing a horse weekly or if it's going to need to be like twice a week, something like that, I'm not going to use something abrasive or I'm not going to like mix betadine or chlorhexidine in with it. But like, some of the gentler shampoos, like a gentle human shampoo and a good curry. It's not, it, I don't think it's destroying the oils the way maybe some people think it is. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And I always feel like when you bathe your horse after it's been a little while, you get way more dirt than you ever expected to get. And it makes you realize Mm -hmm. that maybe it could have happened a little bit sooner. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) All right, Bella. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. It's been awesome talking with you. I really appreciate you joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I've I had a lot of fun. And thank you, everyone, for listening today. Please remember to like this podcast, subscribe, leave a review, and recommend the Stable Management Podcast to a friend.